Are you looking to convert to direct drive without breaking the bank? Well, today we're testing out the updated modular direct drive kit from printermods.com. Recently, I made a video on this. This is the Hamera from E3D, and it's very hyped at the moment as the latest and greatest in direct drive extruders. I fitted it to the Ender 3 because of demand, but a lot of people pointed out that it was quite expensive compared to the purchase price of the printer. I also noted that there was quite a lot of steps that were involved, including some printed parts, firmware changes, and a lot of calibration. Well, there is another alternative, and I've had it fitted to my printer for quite a while now. Previously, I made a video on this budget direct drive kit for the Ender 3, and you might also remember in the past, I made a video on LED upgrades from printermods.com. Matthew and Frank, the creator of those two products, have gone into partnership to evolve it further. It's now better made, nicer looking, and the design has been improved to make it modular and even suit combinations such as converting to a Bontech with E3D V6. We'll start by looking at exactly what direct drive means, its pros and cons, and then we'll look at the product and get into the installation guide. The factory Ender 3 has the extruder, which grips and pushes the plastic, connected via a long tube to the hot end. Direct drive eliminates this tube and mounts the extruder directly on top of the hot end. This isn't automatically an upgrade because there are strengths and weaknesses for both. A Bowden tube has a very light print head and that reduces surface artifacts such as ringing. The long tube makes it more difficult to tune and you need a lot more retraction. Direct drive is the opposite. It has minimal retraction, is easy to tune, but it is heavier and you have more chances of introducing ringing into your prints. Another strength of direct drive is their improved performance when printing flexibles. You can still do it with the Bowden tube, but it's just not as easy. With all of this in mind, let's check out the topic of this video. So here we are on the printermods.com website and we can see at the top is the product that we'll be featuring in this video. And if we scroll down, we'll see there's the LED lighting kits that I've previously featured, as well as linear rail kits that we'll be looking at in the future. If we come to the product page, we'll see that all of the parts have been updated. Now previously, all of these parts here were 3D printed, but they're now injection molded. And our replacement carriage is still aluminium, but now has a much nicer surface finish, as well as the name of the company. Now the name has changed to include an M, and that stands for modular. If we scroll down and look at the table here, it tells you about all of the hot ends and extruders that are supported, and we'll touch more on that later in the video. If you are going to order, make sure you get the correct version. The Ender 3 and the Ender 5 have different carriages, and I imagine the CR10 has longer wiring. The good news is, whichever one you get, the price has not gone up. Previously it was 35, and at the moment it's on sale for 33. Linked on the product page are step-by-step -step instructions that take us through the installation process. And I have to tell you, it is a lot easier than fitting the Hamera. So following these instructions, let's get on with the install. We're going to start by removing the two bolts on the left and the upper side of the hot end cover. And once both are out, we're simply gonna push it to the side and out of the way. Next, we're gonna remove the two bolts holding on the hot end to the carriage. And once these are out, we're gonna let it dangle and move the whole lot out of the way so we can access the carriage more easily. Our next step is to undo the extruder. There are four bolts here, but you won't be able to see all of them until you remove the lever arm. The stepper motor is held up from the top side with all of these bolts, so make sure to support it from underneath as you undo them to stop it from crashing down. Delicately remove the extruder bracket, keeping all of the bolts in the factory position, and then inspect your lever arm. Make sure there's no cracks, and if it looks okay, you're good to go. As previously mentioned, all of the parts that were printed are now injection molded. And we want the spacer, the largest piece here. We take the stepper motor and we pay attention to the orientation of the plug. The spacer goes on top, and then we put in place the extruder so that the cable clip and the plug are both on the same side. We can insert the countersunk screw in the top right hand corner, but we're going to leave the lower two screws vacant. The lever arm can be reinstalled and you want this as tight as possible while still providing smooth motion. If you haven't already, loosen and unscrew the Bowden coupler from the extruder. We're now going to swap the factory carriage with the new one from the MDD kit. Note that the two roller bolts at the top face away to the back of the machine, yet the one at the bottom faces towards the front. 
This is important when we reinstall everything with them facing the same direction. As you pull off each one, put the nut back on finger tight to keep the components in the right order. Repeat for the other top bolt and then repeat for down the bottom. Things are getting pretty floppy by this stage, so be careful not to drop the parts and lose track of their order. The only thing holding the original carriage in place is the belts and now they should be pretty easy to pull out the back. We can now admire our new carriage, including all of the different holes for mounting various extruders and hot ends. Yes, there are printable and free versions of this on Thingiverse, but this is well made, strong and good looking too. I'm going to start my reassembly by putting in the lower roller. And once this is in place, I reattach the two belts on the underside of the carriage. After this, we reinsert and assemble the bolts holding the V-rollers for the top of the carriage. It's important at this stage to check for wobble on your carriage and use a spanner to adjust the eccentric nut underneath if necessary. There's two long black bolts in the kit that are inserted from the rear and the extruder is now going to be held by these. There's an adapter part with a cutout to suit the factory extruder and this is biased towards the right. We now take our factory extruder assembly and make sure that the filament feed is facing up before spinning it around to face the back of the machine and you can see that everything lines up nicely with those two bolts. Fasten them tightly knowing that if you ever need to service the extruder it's only these two bolts that need to be undone. Next the instructions call for us to measure out and mark a specific length of PTFE tube included in the kit. It can be very challenging to get the correct measurement, so I'd recommend adding a couple of millimeters and we can trim it down again later if need be. It's very important to make a square cut here, so if you don't have a specialist tool like I'm using, use a sharp X-Acto blade and make sure you cut it carefully. If you haven't already, you're now going to remove the factory PTFE tube from the factory hot end and reinsert our new shorter version that we just cut. It's very important to make sure this is seated the whole way in. It's recommended to loosen the fitting, push it firmly the whole way in, and then tighten the fitting back up again. Also, don't forget to reinsert the little blue clip to prevent it from working loose in future. Before we progress, we want to make sure we move the wiring for the hot end and fans from the rear of the printer around to the front of the printer. Now we can test the length of our PTFE tube by inserting it into the output of the extruder and seeing if the mounting holes line up. You can see here my tube is just a little bit too long, so I trimmed off a millimetre or so more and repeated my test fit and this time it lined up very well. There's two bolts supplied in the kit and a small rectangular plastic spacer that goes in between the hot end and the new carriage. After this we line up and insert the PTFE tube and then fasten the two bolts to hold the hot end back in place. Technically there's still a small amount of tube between the extruder and hot end but it's very short and it is very straight and trust me it has no bad effects. We lift the wiring going to the heater block up vertically and then carefully place the fan shroud back over the top and reinsert the two screws that hold it in place. Already we're nearing the end of our install so let's tidy up the cables. We're going to remove the top left bolt from the back of the extruder stepper, locate the M3 by 50 millimeter bolt and one of the smaller cable management pieces from the kit and screw it back into place. Now's a good time to complete the wiring and all we need to do is locate the factory extruder sepa motor plug and plug in the extension cable. The other end of course plugs back into the stepper motor. Wiring done. The kit comes with some blue plastic sheathing that you can now put over the two sets of wiring. I don't personally enjoy this type of cable protector so instead I fitted some spiral cable wrap that I already had on hand. I chose to rotate the cable holder upwards and then use one of the included cable ties to secure it down into place. There's two more of these plastic cable tie anchors to install and you'll need to peel off the QR code over the end of the X-axis belt. You can then remove the two left hand bolts, find the two M3 by 50 bolts from the kit and use them to install the plastic part into place. Before we cable tie the wiring loom, we want to ensure we've left enough slack for the carriage to reach the far right hand side. Once you've ensured this, use two cable ties to hold everything securely, tighten them and trim the tails. There's one more anchor to install and we hold it in place to the stop of the Z-axis stepper motor with an M3 by 20 mm bolt. Put the cable tie through the loop but don't tighten it yet. It's important to make sure that this loom is clear of the moving bed before we tighten it. Once you've achieved this, tighten and then trim the cable tie. That's it. 
installation complete and your Ender 3 is now direct drive without losing build volume and with a minimum of fuss. So that's the install done and you might be wondering where the firmware changes are. Well, the good news is because we're using the factory parts, there aren't any required. In fact, the only tweaking we need to do is to our slicing software. You're probably running something like six to seven mils of retraction. You can drop that down to a baseline of 1.2 millimeters. You can also turn off other features designed to help with oozing on Bowden extruders. It shouldn't really have changed, but it's probably a good idea to re-level the bed. And it's also recommended to do a tune of your E-steps, which I've covered previously in this video. But since I was using all the standard equipment, I didn't even bother to do that. And I picked a nice torture test to test out its performance. This chain mail can be printed with a Bowden tube setup, but is definitely a nightmare dialing in the retraction. With just so simple changes you saw before to my retraction settings, I nailed it first go. No stringing or mess between any of the small pieces and it flows as it should, just like chain mail. So, so far in this guide, we've retained all of the factory parts on a stock Ender 3, but let's now turn our attention to the modular nature and be more adventurous with the different combinations of parts that we can fit. So far, we've covered using the standard parts on an Ender 3, but that means using the standard part cooling 4010 blower fan and no mounts for auto bed leveling. Previously, I tested the Hero Me and found it to be a nice part cooling upgrade with mounting options for the BL Touch, Easy ABL, and others. It doesn't quite fit with this direct drive extruder kit, but I've previously made a remix which allows it to go into place and still be compatible with all the various ABL mounts. But what about if we want to try a more adventurous combination? Back to our compatibility table, and I've tested a few of these, although it's impossible in this video to test all of them. What I've shown you so far is the Creality Mark 10 extruder with the Creality Mark 8 hot end, and we use the included spacer. If you were to use a Micro Swiss hot end, that also works with the standard spacer. On my other end of 3 with version 1 of this kit, I was using an Easy R extruder, and as it says here, an STL is needed to space it out. Although it's not linked on this page, that's a part that I designed and released previously on Thingiverse. So let's try a combination that's a little bit more challenging. The Bontec Dual Drive BMG Extruder with an E3D V6 hot end. And as it says, we need an STL, which is a BMG spacer. And there's a link here for that file. Here is the combination in question. Bontec BMG and E3D V6. And here is the simple printed part to get it fitted to this carriage. It faces the right hand side. And then we take the BMG Flip it to face backwards before the extruder goes into place. M3 by 50 millimeter bolts, secure it to the carriage, and yes, this one's quite cantilevered, but normally you would use a much thinner pancake stepper motor. As for my combo with the EZR and Hero Me modified duct with the BL Touch, I'm extremely happy with it. It's easy to use, prints flexible as well, but also produces very high quality standard PLA prints. I've had version one of this kit fitted to this printer for quite some time now, and it's proven to be an excellent long-term performer. I really like the high quality of the version 1.2 parts, so I've pulled them off the other printer and I'll be fitting them to these in the coming days. I haven't given up on the Hemera. That's gonna be going onto my CR10 Max with a Volcano hot end and larger nozzle. That video is coming up in the future and also testing out the linear rail kits for the Ender 3 as well as the Ender 5. If you don't wanna miss those, then hit that subscribe button Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe, and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.